Guys, how are we doing? Welcome to the channel. This is Courtney with Goodworks Tractors. Today we are going to talk about the top 10 snow removal mistakes for tractor owners. It's that time of year. The snow pushers are flying off the shelves just as quick as we get them in. Snow hasn't fallen yet, unusually here in Michigan. We are in nearly mid-December. I'm going to call it mid-December. Why not? But the snow, rest assured, will be on its way. So pay attention. We won't keep you long. These could save you some time, they could save you some money, and they could save you a heck of a lot of frustration. After you're done watching this video, consider giving me a thumbs up, a thumbs down, and also hit that subscribe button. That would really help me out. If you see something you like here, read through that description right underneath the video. There'll be a lot of links down there where you can buy cool stuff for your tractor. If you've been wondering what these big old hunks of steel are right here, these are called snow pushers. These go right on the end of your loader in place of your bucket. Very easy to take on and off. There's no other hydraulics required. There's no electric required. You just simply put it on and away you go. The reason these things are so popular is for the fact that they are good for small snowfalls, deep snowfalls, the light fluffy stuff, the heavy wet stuff, and everything in between. I've done all sorts of videos on these HLA snow pushers in particular and why they kind of stand above and beyond all the others that are on the market. So check those videos out. We can get these in all sorts of different colors and sizes and combinations to fit your machine, whether it's a John Deere quick attach, a skid steer quick attach, or even a custom mount. So visit goodworkstractors.com to get more information and to place your order. Damage to your plowing surface can be a real bummer and a very expensive repair. I just had my parking lot out here resurfaced just earlier this year. It looks fantastic and I want to keep it that way. I get requests all the time. I just got new concrete. I just had my driveway redone. We've had gravel for years. We finally got asphalt. What we're staring at right here are going to be a couple of good options that are going to protect your driveway. You have UHMW, poly for the easy way to talk about it, or rubber right here. Either one of these materials here are going to be very protective of a paved or concrete surface. They're going to plow very well also. They're going to be very quiet and very durable as well. These kinds of materials can generally be flipped over so you can get double the usable life out of them also. I've done comparisons on edges including the poly, the rubber, and even the steel edge so you can see the pros and cons of each. Check out that video if you haven't done so already. If I was going to sum up anything about this poly material right here, the easy way to say it is that it protects like rubber but it cuts like steel. So if you have that brand new driveway, that brand new surface and you want to keep it looking Looking good for years to come, avoid steel at all costs. That is a quick way to cause damage to your drive. Get yourself either this UHMW or the rubber. Now I don't know if this one bothers anybody else out there, but it sure drives me nuts and I do it every year, at least in the beginning of the year. And then what do I do? I find myself out there with a shovel in hand just picking away at it until it's all gone. Now what am I talking about? You drive over the snow before you remove it before you clear it out, before you plow it out. It just drives me nuts because you'll have a perfectly clean driveway, perfectly clean parking lot, except for that two track where you drove in or out, whatever it might be. So if your pusher or plow has a steel edge on it, there's gonna be a pretty good chance that you can get rid of most of that packed snow that you've driven over already. Even the UHMW or that poly is gonna do a pretty darn good job of getting rid of that. However, packed snow is just a very tough job for rubber. So if you have a rubber edge on your plow or pusher that is specifically designed to protect the surface that you're plowing, well, guess what? It's probably not gonna do a very good job at cutting through that packed snow. So the best thing you can do in that kind of scenario is get to plowing it before you drive over it. A very painful lesson that you can learn is on a plow that can be used both in the summertime and the wintertime. Right here we have a John Deere uh, quick attach plow for the front of either, a, it could be a garden tractor, it could be a 1025R, it doesn't matter, they go on, on all those kinds of machines right there. But pay close attention to this uh, pin that goes right through here. Generally in the summertime, because of the weight of the dirt that you're pushing, you wanna lock this pin. Otherwise, you're gonna find these trip springs constantly in that release position there. However, when you get to wintertime and you're dealing with hidden obstacles, say it's a curb or uh, landscape edging or a rock or whatever it is just off the driveway, if you don't have this pin released here, you could find yourself coming to a sudden jarring stop. And you'll see posts online on forums of folks that have either had really significantly damaged equipment or even hurt themselves, jamming, breaking a wrist, ribs, lots of issues that come up, lots of painful injuries that come up to the tractors and to yourself. So it's very simple, it's just this little pin right here. Make sure you pull that out, get that in the released position right up there. And then you'll, you'll notice here, I can actually, Pull that all the way back. That's going to be the trip action there. So if you hit an edge in the wintertime on a, on a hidden obstacle, whatever it is, it's going to give. It's just going to rock forward and then try to slip over it and come back into position. Versus if it's locked up front, it's just going to come to a jarring stop and hurt everything else that's behind it. Now certain pieces of snow removal equipment are going to require extra parts just to keep on hand. They're usable parts. They're sacrificial parts. Something like a snowblower right here is gonna have shear bolts or shear pins, you might hear them called, 
similar to what a brush hog or some other PTO driven piece of equipment would have on the back of your tractor. You're going to have a couple on, on this type of uh, snowblower right here, one on either end. It's important to know that you have those on hand ahead of time. Now some folks will go their entire life without ever having to replace a shear bolt. Others are going to have to replace them on a constant basis. But I want to show you a hidden spot on these John Deere snowblowers that might already have a handful of shear bolts, spare shear bolts for you, you didn't even know about. So take a look right here along the edge of the snowblower on the backside near the chute. You may even just have a handful of holes right here without any shear bolts in them. Wondering what those holes are for? Well, that's exactly what they're intended for. So stock these up. If you happen to shear one or two of them off, make sure you go to the store right away and replace them. That way you always have a full stock if you need it. One of the most frustrating signs of damage that you can have is damage to your yard, damage to your landscaping, damage to your curbs. Get yourself some stake markers, okay? These things are, what, a couple bucks a piece, something like that. At least get yourself a handful of them so you know after there's 12 inches of snow on the ground where that line is because I swear, I tell myself, I can tell where the driveway ends and the yard starts. You know what, the few times I've done that, I normally clip at least a little bit of my turf off. Looks like crap in the spring, so avoid that problem now. Get out there, get yourself some stakes, even a handful of them, okay? You don't spend $100 if you don't want to. Just get a handful of them so you kind of have that line up and down. And you don't have to push the limits, right? You don't have to go and get every single micro inch of your driveway cleared. Play it safe, give yourself an inch or so of space there. You'll have nothing to worry about then. One of the worst things you can do is when you get that first good snow of the year is push that snow right off the drive or the parking lot right to the edge and then leave it sitting there, okay? You gotta have a plan for not just the first snowfall of the year, but for the entire season. Because oftentimes you get that first snow, the first couple snows, it kind of warms up a little bit, then freezes up. You'll never be able to move that pile of snow that you have right along the edge of your plowing area. So push it deep, push it somewhere way back, way further than you think you're gonna need to do to give yourself room to pile it up, to stack it up as snow continues to accumulate. Because sometimes it all melts away halfway through the winter. Other times it just keeps on coming you run out of room to put it. So plan ahead, get that plan in place. Every year I feel like out of my shop in particular, I gotta figure out a different game plan of what to do with the snow. This year, there's absolutely nowhere to put the snow down back behind the shop. We gotta bring it all up front and push it somewhere around up here. We're gonna have to get a little bit creative this year. One of the big mistakes that I try to kind of guide folks to, especially new tractor owners, is gonna be avoiding the lack of traction. There are several ways you can go about improving your traction. Let's talk about those now. Most often, folks wanna put as big of a piece of snow removal equipment on their machine as possible. It's not so much that it's a big piece of equipment that's the problem, it's really that contact surface with the ground where the problem lies. The type of tire that you have on your machine is gonna make a huge difference the amount of traction, therefore the amount of snow that you can push. I changed out my tires to this tread pad and right here specifically for snow removal purposes. Last year on a 4066R, I had the R4, the industrial style of tread pattern. It did terrible. It just did awful, okay? And I'm not alone in that. I've done videos all about different tire tread patterns. This tread pattern right here is just gonna be designed a lot better for snow, for mud, that kind of application there, but I'm really looking forward to using it this year. So the other main component of traction is gonna be weight. There are several ways you can accomplish getting that additional weight that you need. One can be through the use of a ballast box on your three-point hitch. You can load this puppy up, get about 800 pounds or so of ballast weight. Even in my tires right here, I've got about 1,200 pounds of liquid ballast just hiding right in plain sight. You can also add on wheel weights if you want to as well. But if your machine is just too light and you're just sitting there spinning on top of the surface with a big load of snow in front, it's not going to do you any good. So get enough weight to plant you and help push you along. And of course, in extreme situations, you may even need to add on tire chains or tire studs. Another big snow removal mistake for us tractor owners is our machine won't start. Isn't that fun? It happens at the most opportune time. No, <laughs> it never does. What are those things you can do to prevent that from happening to you? There's several reasons in the winter time when it's really cold outside why your tractor might not start. Your fuel system is critical and diesel will freeze or gel, okay? Technically it's gelling. How do you avoid that from happening? Well, typically you're gonna wanna add something like a anti-gel treatment, all right? What this is going to do is lower the temperature that it will freeze at. So it's gonna lower that freeze point, meaning that you're gonna be able to use it in colder temperatures before having an issue. This is something where you can basically buy a can of this. It'll last you all winter long. You can see the mixing ratios on there. You're really not putting a whole lot in there. So the guys over at Lube Shuttle, parent company AirTech right here, sent over this Frost Line minus 40. This is a, another German engineered product right here. So I'm gonna be trying this out this year. 
going to be adding it into my tractors. I'm going to have a couple machines sitting outside all winter long. I'm looking forward to that. You'll see though it says you can lower the gelling temperature 18, 25, 30 degrees just based on these mixing ratios right here. So basically the more of this product that you put into your diesel system, the lower the temperature that's outside uh, you'll be able to operate in. The good thing about this product is you get 5% off with code GWT. Order manufactured direct at the link below. Now depending on if you're storing your tractor indoors or outdoors in a heated or unheated environment, you may need to get something like this right here, an engine block heater. You're just gonna see a plug like this on the uh, side of your engine compartment right here, maybe even for the transmission as well. Just plug it in, give yourself a half hour, an hour uh, before you're gonna go out there and plow, you'll be all set. These are something that can typically be added on by the dealer for maybe a few hundred bucks. Another common problem as soon as the temperatures start to drop are gonna be with batteries, all right? So as soon as it gets really cold outside, you could definitely have an issue with your battery. One way to prevent that, of course, replace the battery, or something else you could do is put on a battery tender or a trickle charger to make sure, especially if you're using it infrequently, that you're good to go. You don't have any issues when it's time to push that snow. Isn't that a beautiful sound? Now, if you want to hear that sound all winter long, make sure you use your glow plugs. That's something that's pretty much standard on all modern day tractors. So don't just go cranking your tractor on. That's just asking for problems or asking for it to not start and the frustration to kick in. It's 20 minutes after five and it's already getting dark. That's what we deal with all winter long when we're pushing snow. Make sure you have your light situation figured out. Your tractor has flashes for a reason. Now is a great time to use them. If you're going out onto a public road, even inside your neighborhood in the cul-de-sac, for instance, I know I like to put my flashers on, make sure I have all my lights on, every single one. I want to be seen from every different angle. You might think you're just going out there really quick to turn around and spin back and come back up the driveway. That's when accidents happen. Now's a really good time to check out your lights, turn them on. Give a look around, see if anything needs to be replaced. Oh, well, it looks like I have work to do. And if these lights look a little bit brighter to you, I replaced all six of the work lights and headlights with an LED bulb for less than 80 bucks. Switching out those halogens to these LEDs has been one of the first things I've done on every tractor I've owned. It's super easy to do. I really love the clarity of these lights and it just allows me to see so much better when I'm working at night. Now, of course, the worst or possibly the best mistake that you can make is the dreaded, you buy a new piece of snow removal equipment and it doesn't snow curse. But that's okay, we don't buy this kind of snow removal product just for one season, it's meant to last us for years and years to come. So if we can pay to keep the snow away for just one year, I know most of us won't be complaining. Well, hopefully you found that fun and informative and will help you avoid making those mistakes this winter. If you wouldn't mind, consider giving me a thumbs up, a thumbs down, and subscribe to my channel by clicking that button below. And don't forget, if you're interested in something you saw in this video, read through that description right down below as well. You'll see all sorts of helpful links down there for tractor owners. Well, until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.